Last week, a group of terrorists were arrested when their plot to kill ex-Muslim and prominent YouTuber Amir Arapour was uncovered. Today, I'll examine what may have motivated these men and Amir's response to the news. On April 15, 2020, German anti-terrorism police forces arrested four men suspected of being part of an Islamic State cell operating in that country. In total, the cell consisted of five men, one of whom was already in custody. An approximate translation of the AFP report explains, Counterterrorism investigators appear to have nipped attack plans of an Islamic State cell in Germany and arrested four suspected Islamicists from Tajikistan in North Rhine-Westphalia on Wednesday morning. The suspects are said to have planned attacks on facilities of U.S. forces and individuals with a further Tajik detained since March 2019. Who were these individuals, you might ask? The article continues. According to the Federal Prosecutor's Office, the suspects were planning, in particular, an assassination attempt on a man who had expressed himself critical of Islam in public from the point of view of the accused. One of the detainees is said to have already spied on this potential murder victim. U.S. air bases in Germany were also scouted. The article goes on to reveal that the individual in question is none other than Amir Arapour, an ex-Muslim convert to Christianity who criticizes Islam on YouTube. Amir posts mostly in German, but I did find a video of him conversing with Christian Prince in English, where he explains his motivation. First of all, I have to say that we are not here to offend Muslims. We are here to um, bring the truth out because the Muslim says uh, Islam is the truth and everything in Islam is so beautiful and it has no contradiction. The Quran is so pure and not hateful and so and when I look at the sources, I see a full of contradiction, full of hate. And uh, it is not normal how they lie to us in a way that they um, try to deceive us, you know. Everything based in Islam is on deceiving people. And we are here to help the Muslim uh, to uh, see the truth of Islam from the Islamic sources, that we're telling the truth, that uh, Brother Christian Prince tell the truth. And I'm very thankful for the brother Christian Prince that he helped me in my life when I was a Muslim and I proved the sources that he posted in his videos and it helped me a lot. And now I want to help some other Muslims to see the truth about Islam. And uh, we love you, Muslim, and we want to see you. We want to see that the, the truth will come out and the truth will set you free. Clearly, this is the kind of hatred that must be silenced, at least if you're an Islamic terrorist. But where did the terrorists get the idea that murder is justified to begin with? Did they invent this idea in their own minds? Or were they perhaps simply following classic Islamic teaching? Let's look at what the four schools of Sunni jurisprudence say about apostates. Let's start with the Shafi school and the world's most popular Sharia manual. Leaving Islam is the ugliest form of unbelief, and the worst. When a person who has reached puberty and is sane voluntarily apostatizes from Islam, he deserves to be killed. In such a case, it is obligatory for the caliph, or his representative, to ask him to repent and return to Islam. If he does, it is accepted from him, but if he refuses, he is immediately killed. The Malachi school teaches, An apostate is killed unless he repents. He is given three days to repent. The same ruling applies to a woman. Likewise, the Hanafi school asks, If a Muslim apostatizes from Islam, what do you think would be the ruling regarding him? He replied, Islam would be offered to him. He has either to accept it or to be killed at once, unless he asks for a deferment. This would be given to him, and the duration would be three days. And finally, the Hanbali school. If someone apostatizes from Islam, whether it is a man or a woman, the penalty of death must be enforced. Because of the saying of Allah's apostle, if someone changes his religion, you must kill him. The apostate should not be killed until he has been invited three times to repent. If he repents, he is spared. 
but if not, he is killed by the sword. As you can see, all the major lines of Sunni thought essentially agree, only disagreeing in minor details about the duration of the waiting period and such. The Shia agree, but take mercy on female apostates. So Islam of a Mutard al-Fitri, an apostate born of Muslim parents, shall apparently not be accepted after he has first apostatized, and he shall be condemned to death if he is male, but a woman shall not be condemned to death, but shall be kept in life imprisonment, and she shall be given beatings at the time of prayer, and she shall be subjugated to tightening or scarcity of food. Her repentance shall be accepted, so if she repents, she shall be set free. A mutard al-mili, an apostate born of non-Muslim parents, shall be asked to repent. On his refusal, he shall be condemned to death. But maybe the terrorists weren't reading the Sharia. Maybe they simply read the Hadith. Ali burnt some people, and this news reached Ibn Abbas, who said, Had I been in his place, I would have not burnt them. Woo! Islam is peaceful after all. As the Prophet said, Don't punish with Allah's punishment. No doubt I would have killed them, for the Prophet said, If somebody discards his religion, kill him. Oh, never mind. What about the Quran? O oh, Prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be firm against them. Their abode is hell, an evil refuge indeed. They swear by Allah that they said nothing evil. But indeed they uttered blasphemy, and they did it after accepting Islam, and they meditated a plot which they were unable to carry out. This revenge of theirs was their only return for the bounty with which Allah and his messenger has enriched them. If they repent, it will be best for them. But if they turn back to their evil ways, Allah will punish them with a grievous penalty in this life and in the hereafter. They shall have none on earth to protect or help them. That's not much better. But let's take the terrorists at their word and say it was the criticism of Islam that motivated them to act. Where did they get that idea from? Ibn Taymiyyah sums up the Islamic scholarly consensus. Whosoever curses the prophet, be he a Muslim or an infidel, must be put to death. All scholars take this view. Likewise, the extremely popular Islam QA website lists two opinions, with little difference. The first, the apparent meaning of the Hadith should be followed, and the one who deliberately tells lies about the Messenger of Allah should be killed. And the second, the liar is to be punished severely, but he is not regarded as a kafir, and it is not permissible to kill him. But, if it is something that implies belittling the prophet or criticizing him, this is obviously mocking him, and the one who says this is undoubtedly a kafir, whose blood may be shed. So, the only disagreement is about whether lying about Muhammad is sufficient to warrant death, or only if that lying rises to the level of mocking. And it's not hard to see why the scholars would make this conclusion when we look at the Hadith. A blind man had a slave mother who used to abuse the prophet and disparage him. He forbade her, but she did not stop. He rebuked her, but she did not give up her habit. One night she began to slander the prophet and abuse him. So he took a dagger, placed it on her belly, pressed it, and killed her. A child who came between her legs was smeared with the blood that was there. When the morning came, the prophet was informed about it. The prophet said, O oh, be witness, no retaliation is payable for her blood. A Jewess used to abuse the prophet and disparage him. A man strangled her till she was dead. The messenger of Allah declared that no recompense was payable for her blood. And the Quran. Those who annoy Allah and his messenger, Allah has cursed them in this world and in the hereafter, and has prepared for them a humiliating punishment. And those who annoy believing men and women undeservedly bear on themselves a calumny, 
and a glaring sin. Truly, if the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease and those who stir up sedition in the city desist not, we shall certainly stir thee up against them. Then they will not be able to stay in it as thy neighbors for any length of time. They shall have a curse upon them. Whenever they are found, they shall be seized and slain without mercy. Now, there's going to be some Muslims in the comment section who claim that Islam teaches no such thing, that the terrorists were simply wrong. Naturally, they won't give any sources, but at best will give their interpretation of some unrelated verse. To that, I say, who should we believe? The consensus of Islam's best and most trusted scholars from the last 1400 years? Or some random guy on the internet with no credentials and no sources? For contrast, let's look at how the Bible instructs Christians to respond to those who criticize our religion. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense for anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and respect having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. The true God does not fear apostates or mockers. He does not need humans to carry out his revenge on his behalf. He's not afraid of critiques because he knows his truth will prevail. His authority is evident and he needs no help from mere mortals. However, a frail human being who makes himself into prophet and God needs to protect his claimed authority by any means necessary. He kills those who mock him and has his minions silence the opposition. He knows his ideas can't stand in the face of truth. Muslims, wake up and see your God for the weakling he is, an impotent idol who needs human beings to force his non-existent will. Finally, let's close by looking at Amir's response to the news. Aber wenn ich auch nur eine Seele aus der Islam rausgeholt habe und sie zum Herrn Jesus Christus geführt habe, habe ich alles richtig gemacht und ich gehe gerne dann in die Ewigkeit. Amen, brother. Amen. Let us fear not those who can kill only the body, but instead place our trust in the one to whom our body and soul belong, our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ. I stand therefore with Amir and present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God.